Hey everybody, it's Dave H. from Dracteo.org with another short video on Jambones, the open source CPaaS. It's based on Dracteo. In this video, I want to show you how you can integrate Node-RED and Google Sheets with Jambones so that you can authenticate SIP users, SIP devices, based on information that you keep in a Google Sheet. I use this a lot in testing. It's kind of nice to be able to generate a new SIP credential just by adding a, a row to a Google Sheet and also then retire it when someone's done using it by just removing that row. And I hope it will show a little bit of insight into how um, authentication is handled in Jambones because it's a little bit different than other CPASSes. Most CPASSes you need to provision SIP users into the CPASS, into their database. Uh, Jambones is different. It doesn't have a database of SIP users. Instead, it's done through webhooks. So when a SIP user attempts to register, you get a webhook and you decide whether to admit that user or not. If you decide to admit the user, the information is cached so that your webhook is typically going to be called only once per hour or so. Um, but let's see how it works if we wanted to keep a, our roster of SIP users, valid SIP users, in a Google spreadsheet and just drive it from there. Okay? Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create a spreadsheet. So go into Google Sheets, create a new sheet. And I'm going to create a very simple spreadsheet with one header row. And each row will simply have three pieces of data. The SIP realm, the username, and the SIP password. SIP username and, and SIP password. I'm going to call the sheet um, creds. And I'm just going to create two users, extension 500 and extension 501. They're both going to be under the same realm, which is jambones.us. And that realm is captured in the portal, the web app, for an account. And so we'll look at that shortly. Anyways, we give them a username and a password and save that. Um, Next thing we're going to have to do is deal with authentication. The Node Red app needs to authenticate and grab those credentials. We do that by creating a project, or I've already got a project in Google Console that I can use. Make sure for the project that the Google Sheet APIs are enabled. You can see I've already got it enabled, but if you're creating a new project, you want to enable that sheet, sorry, that API, and the Google Drive API. And then having done that, you want to create um, a service account and generate a JSON key. So I'm going to go in and Create a service account and download the key. I'm going to make it a project editor. And once I've done that, then I download the JSON key. And we can have a quick look at that. I'm going to use that in two different places. If we open it up and look at it, we can see it's a JSON file. And one of the pieces of information in there is client email. And we want that because what we're going to do is share our Google Sheet with that email address. So we want to copy that email address out of the uh, JSON key file. And uh, we'll go into the Google Sheet and click share. We'll put in that address that we just copied. Um, and there. So now, and we'll say yes, share outside the organization. So now that sheet is, is shared by that organization. That's half the job. The other part of authentication is on the node red side. We're going to be inquiring, trying to grab that sheet, and we'll use the JSON key file as authentication. Now we need to add the plugins for Google Sheet and Google Authentication, which are made by a company called Visio, I guess. I've already installed them, but if you hadn't, you can just search for them under the install palette and you'd find them and you can install them. Again, both the Google Sheet and the Google Authentication plugins are needed. So once we've done that, we can uh, use that plugin to query our sheet. What we're going to do is every 30 seconds, we're going to reread the sheet and update our information about the current list of SIP users and passwords. So I'll use a little inject node. It'll run once when it starts, and then every 30 seconds, it'll reread the sheet. And we'll keep those credentials in a JavaScript variable that we can then look at when authentication requests come in. So we're going to use that Google Sheet plugin that we installed. 
give it any kind of name we want. Now, the first thing is credentials. If we click the little edit icon there, it's got room for a JSON file. And what we want to put in is our JSON file that we, <coughs> excuse me, that we had um, just downloaded. And we want to make sure Sheets is enabled in, in the scopes. So we update, we save that. The next thing is the ID. The ID of the file is actually this little bit of gobbledygook here that comes after the slash D and before edit. So just take that identifier and paste that in. The range just put the name of the sheet, which we called creds, the name of the tab. Um, and then we are not setting, we're not writing, we are reading, so we're getting data by line. And we want to save it into a variable. I'm going to save it into a variable on the message object just called sheet. Um, and that's basically it. We're done there. So every 30 seconds, we'll be reading that into a variable. Once we've read it into a variable, I want to use a little JavaScript to get it into um, an object that we can access a little more easily. And so what I'm going to do is use a JavaScript function node, and I'm going to basically take that information and put it into a flow variable called users. So you can see that I am going to sort of slice off the first line because I know that's just a header. And then I'm going to go through every line, read the realm username and password, and I'm going to put it into a flow variable. That's an object where the keys are the domains, and within each key is a, another object which is keyed by username and has the password. So when we get an authentication request, we can look up the realm. If we have a realm, we can look up the set of users. If the user is in there, we'll be able to have access to the password. And that happens every 30 seconds. So that's good. And we can actually um, click that inject icon to test it. Now the, sec the other part of it, of course, is that we need to respond to the webhook authentication requests. Oh, there's this little missing key error you see. Uh, don't worry about it. It's because I guess the vendor wants you to have a, a key that they theoretically give out freely, which but which I've been able to find how to get for telemetry purposes. It's not a license purposes. It's not a licensing thing or anything. It doesn't affect anything. So, anyways, the next thing is we have a webhook for our SIP authentication request. So let's just say that's going to be slash SIP auth. We're going to get an HTTP post with the path of slash SIP auth every time someone tries to authenticate. And we then want to look up in our little JavaScript object and see if we know that user in that realm. And if so, produce the passwords, which we'll do with this little bit of JavaScript um, here. So we're going to get that flow variable. We're going to check for the realm. If we have the realm, then within that that, uh, that, that other object, we will retrieve the password. Uh, or the password will be null or undefined if we are unable to retrieve it. But once we have the password, all we need to do is, is use the user auth plugin, Jambones plugin, to return it. And uh, since I had set that on a flow variable, we'll just do that. Um, and we're good. And that, that will basically send the response back, which will authenticate us if the password was provided correctly. Otherwise, we'll not. And that's it. So now we've deployed our, our webhook. Um, and we're all set on that end. Uh, the next thing we need to do, though, is to... Well, actually, before we do, there's one other thing we can do, which is kind of useful sometimes if you want to see the messages going back and forth. We can just use a little debug node. So in this case, I just want to log out to the debug window what the auth request um, looks like. So just to give you a chance to see what it actually looks like, what we're getting in the webhook. I'm going to deploy that. Um, so we're good to go. Now we need to make sure that GM Bones is actually going to um, send us that webhook. So we got to go in here and for our account, I'm going to change and set the webhook to SIP auth, which we just did. So I'll save that. So now any authentications against that account will hit that our webhook. And now we're all set. So let's create a new SIP account. 
And let's use extension 500 as the user ID. Put in the domain jambones.us and the password foobar that we is in our sheet. Hit OK and see, yes, we successfully registered. If we go back, we can kind of look in the debug from that debug information and we can see the info that came in to node red in the payload for register. Now let's go back and say we're done with that user. Maybe we gave it out for test purposes, so we'll just delete it from the sheet. We go back to our uh, SIP device, and now it doesn't register. Bang, we're all set.